series of videos, we'll look at metaprogramming in Lean, especially for uh, writing tactics. This first introductory video you should view in the spirit of a visit to the zoo, where you see a lot of strange creatures, so that next time you see them, they'll be somewhat familiar. We are not, don't expect to understand things at a deep level. We'll look at pieces uh, with lots of examples and understand them step by step in subsequent videos. Okay. So to start with what is metaprogramming, it's programs that write programs or more generally functions or programs that work with programs or their components. And a good way of doing it, principal way of doing it is to work with internal representations of programs or their components. You could just work with their source code, but that's very brittle and error prone and so on. Now in Lean, there are two levels of internal representation. There's syntax and there is kernel expressions, which is an inductive type EXPR. And the way Lean works in an interpreter like this or compiling is that you have two steps. You parse and when you parse, you convert um, text into syntax and then you have a stage called elaboration that transforms syntax into expression provided this is syntax for terms. Okay. So for example, here we see a bunch of Lean code. One plus three is just text. What happens is this is passed into syntax and then because this is a term, it is passed into a further elaborated to a kernel expression. This is type checked and simplified and evaluated or in this case, it's simply type checked and the type is reported and so on. Okay. So our goal in this introduction is to be somewhat familiar with these two objects, syntax and expression, and we'll work with them in more detail later. Uh, some of these details we see here will not even be relevant for a while. Okay, so let's first of all look at what is syntax. So, so syntax is an inductive type okay, and it is a rooted tree. So that means you have a, a node and it branches and you have the branches could be further nodes and so on till they finally end up with leaves. So you have a node and you have three kinds of leaves. It could just be missing syntax. It could be an identifier which is determined by a name or an atom which is determined by a string and all sorts of things can be atom. Anything that doesn't get decomposed further into a tree. And you notice that the node has a syntax node kind which is actually just a synonym for names. It's an abbreviation which is name and lots of information is here. So syntax is a rough structure which we will record here. It's an inductive type. It's a rough structure which is scaffolding to represent a whole range of things in a convenient tree-like fashion. It can represent not only commands and terms and tactics, but also identifiers and arguments. In fact, there are so many syntax categories, this is sometimes a pain to work with. Okay, so let's look concretely, a simplest syntax, well, Google could get simpler than this, but one simple thing is let's just look at one. You'll see that what you have is a single node which is a syntax kind numeral telling you that this is a numeral and then you would get an atom and the atom is the source which is one. There is other information like the source for other purposes than uh, running code because we after all work with it, we modify it, we have the info view and so on. Okay. Well, what about something like one plus three? Here you see that the top tells you this is term plus. This is a syntax node kind. It is telling you it's an addition. And then, so you branch into addition. And then you have two other um, trees. These correspond to one and to three, which is what we added up here. Okay, so we add them up. Those are like what we saw later. So you build it up by tree. There's a more complicated syntax and you see how quickly complicated this gets, which is why we will not be working with this representation, as I'll say again in a moment. You see, this is a function, but there are different kinds of parsers for functions. This is basic function because of the simple form of the thing. And then we have identifiers, uh, which will tell you this is a function of n. You will see the NAT at some point uh, as an, uh, again an identifier. Uh, and then you would see the two trees. I mean, the tree corresponding to n plus one, which in turn has two trees, those corresponding to n and those corresponding to one, etc. Okay. So here atom plus is an atom. I think it has not been parsed fully yet. So this is the way in which uh, syntax is represented. We do not work with syntax at this level very much. Most of the time we use quotations and anti-quotations. In our first video where we write tactics, so the second video of this series, you will see this being done. 
that will give you a clearer idea of how we work with syntax but it's good to know what is going on in the background it's a very extensible it is a tree like structure and that syntax node kind has lots of information there are hundreds of syntax node kinds and they will give you all sorts of different forms of syntax it's highly extensible on the other hand expressions better not be extensible because they represent terms in the foundation of lean Okay. So let's look at some of these expressions. Uh, so by the way, both has syntax and has expression are some little ad hoc commands that I wrote to let you display these things. They are being imported into this file. So what about expression nat? This is maybe one of the simplest kinds. It's just a constant. This is the name. This is a list of levels. So you have a constant, you have a name, and you have a list of level parameters. Uh, natural numbers is just has no level parameters. Okay. Our second example is a NAT to NAT. As you probably know, in Lean, you do not have a spe specific foundational type for arrows. They are pi types. And they are pi types with some internal variable which is just not used. And for a pi type, this is a default binder, and uh, which means there's no implicit parameter. And it's a function from natural numbers to natural numbers. Mm, sorry, it's a function from natural numbers. Uh, yeah, uh, to uh, so it's a pi type and the value is going to be nat, which is a type here. Okay, a more complicated expression. Let's first look at its reduced form. This reduces to three and then it gives you a literal. Literals could be natural values or they could be string wells. Okay, so literals are stored in for efficiency as literals in lean4. Okay, that's part of the foundation of lean4. And uh, well, what about the full expression well again you'll see the literals one and two from which things are built and it's a repeated function application so you may wonder why there's only one function application but then you probably remember that addition in lean will go to heterogeneous addition okay where you are given the two input types the output type and then the operation itself is defined by type class. So there are four parameters plus two. So there are six parameters. And indeed, you see one, two, three, four, five, and six apps. The constant h add dot h add. They all constants have a bunch of levels. And then the inputs are both natural numbers. Output is not natural number. And then we have an inst h add and so on. Now, here's an even more complicated one. We won't look at it in detail, but just look at the top. So this is another expression type, which is a lambda. And the variable is n. And this is the type of the variable. So that's another form of expression. We will soon look at all the types of expressions. Now, unlike syntax, we do work directly with expressions quite a lot. But also, we have a whole bunch of helpers which let you build expressions, match expressions, decompose them, etc. And we'll be using those in this very nice API that Lean provides. Okay. So, but this is the most sophisticated form of metaprogramming, which will be most of the series. The syntax level is the simple form, which will be just one video for writing so-called macro tactics. Okay, for completeness, let's look at what is an expression type. Okay, so we can even copy it there. So it's an inductive type and there are a bunch of cases. There are literals we already saw. We already saw function applications and lambdas and for alls. Okay, there are the let statements we, whenever we use a let statement. The free variables are used when you have a lambda and bound variables are things inside a lambda. Okay, this expression will show you both free variables and bound variables. The free variable n which will sit somewhere above in uh, uh, the lambda. Oh, it says n. Okay, so free variable is, sorry, uh, not, it's not visible in the expression here, but it's inside, internally visible. Bound variable is saying it's the zeroth variable counting backwards in De Bruyne in indexing. Okay, meta variables are the heart of meta programming. Sorts are types or prop and so on. Okay, there are a couple of other internal things that you can use. These are the projections onto structures. Okay. So this was the set of expressions. As we go along, we will learn through lots of examples to work with syntax, but indirectly, and mostly to work with expressions, sometimes directly, but most often using the beautiful API that Lean provides.